Hey, good morning. I was asked about the uh, dial indicating snap gauges when I'm uh, when I choose uh, to check out this project, uh, the little shaft, and um, I'll I'll show uh, a, a really old one and a new one, and and maybe get an idea of just how these things work. They're they're really quite simple. Let's have a look at that newer one here. Right down there. Don't have a lot of uh, bench rim around here, so uh, the old uh, brown and sharp can kind of fill in. <laughs> okay, now now here's the uh, one that I, I'm checking those shafts with, and I set it with gauge blocks. Okay, so and and to set it, the this top this top. Uh, part moves here and the bottom part's a solid anvil. So when you put a gauge block in it, I kind of like to roll it in. It just kind of uh, get it like that, a little bit of an angle, then just push up and see it just slides in like that. And that's five eighths of an inch. Might be a little temperature. It's quite chilly out here. So things change a little bit. That's showing a ten thousandth difference. But uh, I'll, I'll move it to zero. So you want to do that a, a time or two. Let's, let's, take, let, let's take that out. And uh, slide it back in. Of course, you know, it's best to uh, have a cotton glove on or something when handling those gauge blocks. Because they're going to expand a little bit. Oh, now I'm showing a little bit under, see? You gotta gotta get things to stabilize out a little bit. But I got uh, the temperature variation in here will easily cause um, um, a ten thousandth at this time. I kind of let it get a little too cold in here. Oh, warm it on up and get, get busy with things. Let's try that one more time. Like I said, I should have a, a cotton glove on my left hand here. There we go. See, now we're repeating. Okay, now I'm going to set this aside. Over here. Okay. Now, this one, this is kind of cool. Um, this one here... Um, it, it, it's an antique, and you can actually set it within a couple thousandths with uh, an, an old vernier caliper. See if you can see the dial. I'll engage the uh, little screw there. And crank it out. And I found, uh, let's see if I can get that back on there. A little bit tricky. You can set it with an in, uh, inside micrometer or uh, a gauge blocks, of course. But this one just reads in, in uh, uh, one thousandths. Okay, I'll set that back up there. Now, when you set this on the work, you see, this is the same as the newer ones. Uh, but it's easier to see and easier to handle for me uh, with the camera. This is your stop. So it, it's kind of like having a, something in a V-block or something with an indicator on it. You see it'll go to zero there or pretty close. And then if you go too far, you see it goes into the negative. Just like uh, if you when you're first starting. So you push the gauge on until it goes to the positive. And then you push this over. See if I do it with my little finger and uh, lock it and that's your stop let's see see something like that oh i can see it's too far over so I'll pull it back a little bit right about there yeah Let's see if that stabilizes out. 
Yeah, pretty good, see? So let's move it a little bit. See, we're pretty round. See? Very easy. <laughs> okay. So, this one works a lot the same. It's just more uh, fancy looking. And also, the pads on this, I should point this out, are really, really wide. And uh, some of these gauges have uh, uh, pads that might be more suited for um, narrower um, parts and things like that. And uh, Federal makes some standard Poughkeepsie made them. And, and other gauge companies make, make these uh, dial indicating um, snap gauges, which uh, makes things uh, really quite easy to gauge. Okay, now I'm uh, going to get this off here. I'm uh, still dealing with these parts over here. Now, um, I'm going to click the light on here. I was checking this part here with the gauge, and um, it, uh, I don't know if it'll go to zero or even near it. It's showing uh, a half thousand under. Let's rotate that. Okay. Let's see what it's doing. You see that part's round. I rotated it, and and these other parts I showed in the video uh, are not round. And uh, one of the things I wanted to point out that the way I like to do things is uh, <clears throat> a material like this. It's not very expensive um, comparatively to other things. I, I would have ordered these with another inch and a half length that it could chuck and then machine the whole thing in one set, right? You have a piece in there and uh, you, you have to cut this towards the tail stock or, you know, or however you want to do it. I got tools to cut both ways. And uh, just cut that in one set, and this thing would be true automatically. But short pieces like this I deal with sometimes because the material is extremely expensive. Um, this test piece of material here I was cutting in the uh, uh, the newer Monarch, you know, playing around with the with the snap uh, gauges and um, and uh, running the lathe real fast, burn up a tool on it and stuff. A lot of fun. But this stuff here is really expensive, pre-hard material. As a matter of fact, it was even x-rayed. You know, <laughs> it's a, a rim that I got from, uh, from a friend. So I work with a lot of stuff like this because it saves time, you know. But it, it just depends what you're doing. But, uh, you know, I, I would think in a CNC machine like uh, like this was done, uh, it might be better just to have it at a long bar. And then, you know, I don't know. Those things, uh, um, it's, it's not what I do. I, I don't like manufacturing. I like fixing things. Now, this, uh, I, I noticed here, I don't know if you can see it, but that is like really a crappy center drill. I mean, it's... Uh, I don't know, you know, I think that's a Chinese center drill or something that did that, not a good one. It's even, it shattered. <laughs> so, the, I, don't, I don't know. But I guess um, this is uh, something that the, the, uh, the owner of this uh, tool will do, is do this uh, uh, tapping, because I think that's... Uh, uh, hook something on there to drive this uh, line boring tool. And it's very simple, you know, I didn't really recognize, uh, but it's got a, it's got a, uh, 
uh, a set screw right here and just a round hole drilled through so you could put high speed steel or even round carbide in there to uh, do the cutting. So it's, it's a very simple tool. It just needs uh, <laughs> the, the variance true with each other. And uh, this, uh, uh, it, it might not matter in a lot of uh, circumstances, you know, how, uh, I don't know, how true some things are. Uh, but it's kind of bad practice to have something like this and then take and hone the bushings out big enough so this thing will rotate. Then, you know, I, I think it, w it could cause shatter and be a bad cutting tool. Okay, I'm going to uh, most likely just uh, 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 turn the ODs to these and uh, then then put them in a, in a chuck and, and just <laughs> get it done. But this one here, I, I, I'm going to try to... Uh, uh, I think there's enough I can do a skim cut at uh, extreme speed and, and do pretty good on that. Okay, I, I will be back. I'm, I'm still doing woodworking and, and, and stuff downstairs. Maybe I'll show some of that off. I'm having a good time. Okay, bye-bye.